One of the enduring images of the Second World War shows a Japanese soldier stood over a crouching prisoner, with a sword drawn about to take the life of the man in question. This was a shocking image when it emerged after it was found on the body of a dead Japanese major. When it was discovered by American soldiers, it was believed to have shown the only surviving picture of a Western prisoner of war being executed by a Japanese soldier. It was an image that haunted many, and angered many across the world, showing the brutality of certain armies during World War II. However, today we look at the story behind that picture, and today we look at the brutal execution of Leonard Sifleet. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Leonard George Sifleet was born on the 14th of January 1916 in New South Wales. He was an Australian who had a relatively normal early life and who had lived with his parents and his siblings. He loved sport and adventure and in the 1930s he left his small town to head to Sydney to look for work. Sifleet's dream was to join the Australian police force but during the selection process he was refused a position as a police officer as he had poor eyesight. In August 1940, he was called up for the militia, or the Australian Army Reserve, as the Second World War had broken out. When the war started, the Australian government immediately called up 10,000 militiamen to provide continuous service stationed at guard posts around the country, keeping an eye out for any possible invasion. This was later expanded, and 40,000 men were called up for this service. They were given training, and many men went on to serve in the Pacific, as the conflict came to a theatre closer to Australia. Whilst the war was occurring in Europe, Australia was safe, but as the conflict went to Australia's doorstep following the attack on Pearl Harbour and the attack on British forces in Malaya, there was a huge risk that the Japanese could invade the Australian mainland. By April 1943, the risk of invasion was incredibly real, as Malaya and Singapore were lost, and the Japanese landed in New Guinea. In August 1940, Leonard Sifleet was stationed in the searchlight unit at the RAAF station Richmond. Here he served keeping guard at the station, but only for three months. His mother died in that time and he then had to go home to look after his younger brothers. He left this job and then began to work in a shop, but wished to continue to serve his country, enlisting in the 2nd Australian Imperial Force in September 1941. He was sent to a signals company but went AWOL twice, and became engaged. It was clear that communications may have been the right role for Sith Fleet, and this need for an adventure plunged him deep into the conflict of the Second World War. He continued to train in radio communications, and then volunteered after this to take part in special operations. He was sent to the Services Reconnaissance Department of the Allied Intelligence Bureau in Melbourne. Here he continued to train, and was then transferred to Z's Special Unit in October 1942. This unit was a secret detachment who operated behind Japanese enemy lines in southeastern Asia. It was mostly made up of Australian soldiers, but did include British, Dutch, Indonesian, New Zealand and other members. They mostly saw service in Borneo and the former Dutch East Indies. During the war they carried out dozens of operations, in which they were dropped either behind enemy lines by parachute or submarine, conducting guerrilla warfare and gathering intelligence. They were comparable to SOE, who operated behind enemy lines in Europe. He completed further training and Sifleet was then promoted to sergeant. He transitioned to M Special Unit, another secret recon unit based against the Japanese. He was considered one of the best soldiers and was described as a young and competent soldier. He was recruited to join Operation Whiting because of this. This was a joint operation between Dutch and Australian forces in New Guinea. It ran alongside another operation, and the mission was to establish a coast watching station in the hills above Hollandia, in Dutch New Guinea. This area had been taken by the Japanese. The other mission, Locust, was to work alongside it, and this involved a long trek through Japanese territory to then establish a base camp to observe the Japanese. The team involved in Whiting was Sergeant H.N. Staverman, Corporal D.J. Topman, two Indonesian privates, M. Raharing, H. Patival, and Leonard Sifley, the radio operator. Both of the teams flew into Bena Bena in February 1943 and began to travel and trek through the jungle. It took months, and on the 14th of June 1943, 
After having walked 500 miles and travelled 230 miles by boat, they reached the Lumi airstrip. Following this, the Whiting group then left to Hollandia with 66 native people. By September, they had arrived at Atapi. However, following this, things went very wrong. Whilst on a recon mission, Stavemann and Patival were ambushed and Stavemann was killed. Patival did escape and left back towards the camp, but the three men, including Sifleet, who were then left, decided to flee to the south. Things initially seemed positive, but whilst the group were having food at one tippy, a group of a hundred locals surrounded them and things turned nasty. It's clear the locals had had enough, and to force them back, Leonard Sifleet fired his gun at one of the attackers, wounding him, and then he managed for a short time to evade capture and break out. However, this wasn't for long and he was quickly caught, and then was handed over to the Japanese by the locals. All of the men were beaten, tortured and interrogated at a Japanese outpost, and were then transferred to a tarpi. The Japanese treated the men terribly in an attempt to obtain information from them about their work, but they were subject to execution for their actions. Leonard Sifleet was marched to a tarpi beach. He was blindfolded and had his hands bound, and a large crowd of Japanese soldiers and natives were there to witness his execution. A vice admiral of the Japanese navy had ordered the executions of the captured men, and Sifleet was forced to kneel down on the beach. He was then approached by an officer, Yasuno Chikao, who ordered a member of the Japanese army, a private, to photograph him taking the head off Leonard Sifleet. This grisly image today is one of the most haunting of the Second World War. It shows Sifleet seconds before his death, with Chikao having his sword drawn, ready to bring it down and behead the Australian soldier, who's helpless and blindfolded. He is sitting in a pre-dug hole in the sand, and along with two other men, he was beheaded and then buried. What shocked many is the brutality of the image, with Sifleet looking rather emaciated and haggard, such was his treatment. The photograph itself was found on the body of a dead Japanese soldier near to the area in April 1944, and it showed one of the only surviving images of a POW being executed by the Japanese. This was then published in Australian newspapers, who wrongly identified it as another soldier, and later Sifleet was identified as the soldier in the image. After the war, Yasuno Chikao, the executioner, was sentenced to death for the execution, but this was later commuted to imprisonment, as he was deemed to have been simply following the orders of his superiors. So the image of Leonard Sifleet was a haunting one during the Second World War, which still evokes a significant degree of emotion and upset today. It's an image that captures the brutality, horror and sheer depravity of a war. But at the heart of the image is a young Australian soldier, who was 27 years old when he was killed on the beach. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.